life of Elizabeth occurred the evening of the day Richard was fired. Now, Richard is a very good friend of Alvin, so naturally Alvin was concerned, and uh, Alvin is a very good husband of Elizabeth, so naturally uh, Elizabeth was concerned. See how cleverly it all works out? Honey, for heaven's sake, will you sit down? You've been pacing like that ever since you came home. Anybody think you were the one who'd lost his job? But I worry about the guy. Now, I wonder what he did to get himself canned. Probably something brilliant if I know our boy... Our boy Richard. Maybe he tried to cash a hat check. <laughs> Elizabeth, don't say things like that. There are times when Richard's positively brilliant. Name one. Well, uh, uh... I admire your loyalty to your friend, sweetheart, but let's face it, this is a man who... who who thinks a troubadour is a bullfighter. Yeah. <laughs> well, is it? Of course not. A troubadour is a... a, a fellow who plays truba. <laughs> I read that up. I think that's funny. <laughs> Are you through making fun of my friends? Darling, I was only kidding you. Come here a minute. Come here. I think the world of Richard. You do not. You keep saying he's stupid. Uh, you're getting completely off the subject. Come here. The thing we have to do when Richard comes here tonight it is try to get his job back for him. Or at least help him get a new one. The fact that he's not very bright just simply complicates matters a little bit. Now he's not very bright. Before he was stupid, and now he's not very bright. Will you calm down? The, the point is, stupid or not, I like Richard very much and I want to help him. Then if you like Richard, apologize for what you just said about him. All right, I think he's very sweet and gentle and completely non compos mentis. <laughs> that goes for you, too, darling. Thank you, dear. <laughs> oh, there he is. Yeah, I'll get it. Oh. <clears throat> Hi, Richard. Hello, Elizabeth. Hi. Hi, Alvin. I brought you your evening paper. That silly paper boy threw it clear over on the neighbor's lawn. <laughs> you don't take any evening paper, Richard. It must belong to the lady next door. Well, no wonder she put up such a fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's quite a scrapper. She... Oh, you two sit down. I'll take it back to her. Yeah. Look, look, would you do me a favor? Please concentrate a little tonight. You know, for a skinny old lady, she sure can fight, Alvin. Look, what did I just say? I think I can take her if I go into training. Well, never mind. <laughs> Three, four. Never mind that, Richard. Elizabeth and I have been discussing you, and I want you to help me convince her that you're a brilliant man. Okay. Uh, now, what did I just say? You want me to convince Elizabeth that you're a brilliant man. No, I want you to make... Here she comes. Alvin? Mm-hmm? Come here a minute. Sure. I'm Alvin. <laughs> Richard seems to have started a whole civil war with Mrs. Skinridge. She called Mr. Skinridge and the National Guard and a whole troop of brownies. Well, will you see if you can pacify her? Okay. <laughs> A whole troop of brownies? Of course not, but she's plenty burned. Did somebody burn some brownies? I wasn't talking about cookies, Richard. Neither was I. I was talking about cameras. <laughs> That's nice. Tell me about losing your job. Well, before I do that, I want you to know that Alvin is a very brilliant man. <laughs> What brought that on? Well, I don't know, but he told me to tell you. <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, tell me about losing your job. Well, the boss called me in this morning and gave me a little pep talk. Should have heard him. He said, uh, young man, when I was your age, I started in at $5 a week. And six years later, I owned the whole store. And what'd you say? Well, I said, you can't do that nowadays. They have cash registers. And 
then he fired you. Yeah, but he gave me a letter of recommendation. You should read it. Look at there. The bearer of this letter has worked for me for one year, and that's enough. Isn't that nice? And there's more, too. <laughs> he is also one of the best men we have ever turned out of the office. Oh, and believe me, we've turned out some Lulus. <laughs> well, I think I quieted her down now. But her husband's a little mad. <laughs> Thanks, honey. <laughs> Incidentally, Richard's been living up to all the nice things you said about him. He is absolutely non compass mentis. Thank you, Elizabeth. Well, that's good, honey. You deserve it. <laughs> Both of you. Yes, we do, Alvin. Thank you, dear. Now, let's get down to business. Uh, I think trying to get Richard's old job back is kind of hopeless. But we could find a new field for him. How about uh, selling insurance? Yeah, how about that? Well, now, that takes a keen analytical mind and then a lot of personality. Yes, it does, Alvin. Well, Richard has a keen analytical mind. You said yourself he was non compass mentis. Yes, you did, Elizabeth. All right. All right, let's try it. Let's see how you'd approach a housewife. This ought to be fun. I'll watch. <laughs> she needs you, Richard. Oh. What do you want me to do? Well, you're going to sell me some insurance. You're the salesman and I'm the housewife. Come on. Well, don't just stand there going out on the porch. I'm afraid of that old lady, Alvin. <laughs> well, she fights like a tiger. Richard, come on. You go on over the door. Go on. Okay. He's <clears throat> a nutmeg. Honey's a little confused, that's all. And when you're around him, you don't act like any Einstein either. Well, I'll bet he'll be a good salesman. Um, uh, <clears throat> ring the bell, Richard. Come in. <laughs> yes? Yes? See, that was a quick sale. Same right here. She means yes. What do you want, meathead? Alvin. Now, you try it again, Richard. Just, just from right there. Hello? Never mind that. Sell her some insurance. Would you like to buy some insurance? Well, I usually let my husband take care of that. Oh, hi, Alvin. Oh, no, no. Look, honey, let me show him how. Now, now Wait temper. Remember, he's not stupid. This is the way it should be done. <coughs> how do you do, madam? I represent I'm the... I'm sorry, uh, not today. <laughs> Will you let me get through telling you what I represent? All right, what do you represent? Well, I haven't had time to think one up yet. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I can't do business with a man who doesn't even know what company you represent. <laughs> Elizabeth, will you stop talking like that? We're trying to show him how to approach a housewife. This is only a hypothetical case. Well, who's sick? <laughs> All right, look, as long as we're going to pretend... Let, let's, let's go the whole way. Uh, I'm Martha, and, uh, and you're Charles. This man is annoying me, Charles. I'll go get him. Uh, no, wait a minute. You are Charles. Oh, I'm Charles. Richard, do you have any idea what's going on? No, but I think it's very interesting. You're Charles. Charles, throw this man out. Sure. No, wait a minute. If you put your hand on me. I'm sorry. I got carried away. You were saying, young man. How about some stupid insurance? <laughs> well, you could both use some stupid insurance. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I leave all insurance matters up to my husband. Good. My dear sir, I have a policy here that I feel sure will certainly interest... Hi, Alvin. Hi. <laughs> Honey, please. All right, let me be the salesman. Neither one of you know how to flatter a woman. Now, watch this. What is the matter with... Open the door, Richard. <laughs> Hello, little girl. Is your mother here? I'm Charles. I give up. Well, you mixed him up. What's the big idea of calling him a little girl? Alvin's right, Martha. That was flattering. 
when you ask the woman of the house if her mother's in, she thinks... She... Oh, what's the use? Are you implying that Richard's stupid? I didn't say he was stupid. But I am, Martha. <laughs> Richard, the only thing left to do is to try to talk your boss into taking you back. Do you think you could? Oh, yeah, she, she's good at this sort of thing. What's his yeah. name? Mr. Skinridge. Skinridge? I'll call information. <laughs> oh, brother, that did it. What's the matter? Do you know Mr. Skinridge? <laughs> you just stole Mrs. Skinridge's paper. Well, Martha, how did I know? Say goodbye to the people. Goodbye, goodbye everybody. everybody. Look, you can get a job. You can be a good girl. And now, here to say goodbye to you is the lovely star of our show, Betty White. Thank you, Jack, and thank you, everybody. Thank you. As always, we've had a wonderful time. I hope you have. And just before Richard left, he whispered a little word of philosophy that I think is worthy of passing along to you. As he put it, all's well that ends. Once again, till we see you again. Goodbye, everybody.